top. It's been it on launch. Wait, wait for her turn. And they discharge into that coil which is on the bottom and as a result of that coil uh, it transforms the energy into the aluminium ring which creates a current which opposes the current in that coil and causes it to uh, fly apart. Wow. <laughs> and this one we call it the magic wand. So you can hold, hold it and come close to the Tesla coil and you see how you can have big sparks appearing. This one is doing the same, so hold it, hold it, and come closer. Oh my, I get shocked. Yeah, it can work like this also. Or you can Woo! hold it from the other end. Oh yeah. It's like, when you put your hand in, it's like a liquid, and then uh, if you pull it out, it feels like a sod, and then it turns back into a liquid. Very, yeah. very sparkly. And you can hit it, and it won't, like, splash up. It's like you're hitting solid concrete. It's so cold, you can touch it. It's very brittle as well. You can break it. You can see it breaks really easily because uh, materials, when they get really cold, they get very brittle. And once it warms up again, you can notice, you can touch that. You should see a bubble that just levitates for a while. Now, what's really cool about this is that the dry ice is actually cooling the bubble to the point where it's solidifying the soap shell around it. And this is a solidified soap shell, but it's soap, so it just evaporates right away. Very, very fragile. So by the end of the day, my glove is going to be very, very oily and clean. And also, there's a gas mixture inside light bulbs. If I expose it to the high voltage from the coil, you see it lights up just like a plasma globe. This is a neon tube. It's got pure neon gas in it. Neon gas is a characteristic light red glow. And the higher the frequency, the more the current travel travels over the surface of conductors. Also, our nerves are responsive to the higher frequencies. Because of that, I can do this. And if you look at it, you know, with a magnifying glass, you still read all the little letters on it and everything. It hasn't gotten much fatter, a little bit. It's a loud countdown from three. Three, two, one. Whoa. All right. Okay, so now what do you think is going to happen with the one in the center, just from looking at it? It's going to go further. Why? Because it's bigger. That's right, more stored energy, but it's the same pressure. So we have more volume. We've got two air chambers. We have two valves, so we have a shorter time to get the air behind the potato and a longer barrel, so the potato is going to accelerate for a longer period of time. Let's have a loud countdown, everyone. Three, two, one. Put both ass back against the surface. All right, here we go. Again? All right, good job. What? Do you want to do it or not? I want to do it. Oh, good job. Can we do it again? Oh, I see it's shaving off a thin layer there. Yeah, oh, yeah it's, it's taking ten thousands at a time. It's going to go by the program, and it's going to go so far, I run a program, and it will cut threads, and then it will go to the next process and turn. I have it going slow now for the show. You know, uh, if it was running in real time, it would be just a blur of stuff. So this is a lathe, right? Yes. Okay. Tail stock, or I could have... Now we have the peeps over here. Oh, we're not taking those out of there, and we're not eating them. 
just going to see them expand and get smaller again. When I take the air pressure out of here, watch what happens to the peeps. Watch the peeps lose. Okay, so now I'll let the air back in. You gotta come over here so I can get your name. 7.5? Seven 7.5, 7 .5. 7 .5, nicely done. It starts over here and the sharper you go with the sound, the higher the frequency. And if you have many sounds at the same time, you would see many peaks at the same time. And this is basically what we do over here in our lab, in ICR. Try, try to say something on the microphone. Say hello. Hello. See that? That little peak was your sound. Do you have any idea why that penny should fall so much faster than the feather? Watch. I'll, sh I'll show you something. I'm going to make the feather fall faster now. The feather is being dragged through air. We don't think about it much because we're not used to seeing air, right? But that feather really sees it. Sample container in which we put uh, something we want to analyze, whether it's a virus or um, like influenza, tuberculosis, or some protein from your body or a drug, and we stick it inside here. And there, it's, you can hear it spin. You can feel the air coming out of here. It can spin up to seventy thousand rotations per second. That's pretty huge. And uh, this is called magnetic resonance spectroscopy probes. Ready? Slowly, slowly. Ooh! That's a huge one. Tell me what type of eruption is this out of these three? Pyroclastic, yeah. So if I go higher, then it looks like more pyroclastic. If I go a little lower, it's like explosive one. Okay, this is crushed up mid-ocean ridge basalt, 250 million years old. We take this and we flux it with other chemicals so we can actually achieve the melting point to make hot molten lava. We can take that lava out, pour it into our cast iron grate, and form miniature rocks from 250 million year old rocks. See how red hot it is? Same floor? Wait a minute. It's pretty cool. Red hot. Rocks are better. And what kind of fish is that? Uh, this is a horseshoe crab. A horseshoe crab. A yeah. okay. These right here are actually two eyes, even though they look like a nose. These are two more eyes, and these are all light sensors back here. And he's actually related to his, the spider, even though he's called a horseshoe crab, because he normally has eight legs. The spectrum glasses start to see the visible light spectrum patterns of different gases. Will you guys want to see carbon dioxide? Yeah. So now we're going to look at carbon dioxide gas in the tube and see its color pattern. What you're looking for, the pattern is the stuff that's out here and underneath, not the color in the center. Yes. This is awesome. Sugar, a little bit of egg beater stuff, a whole pint of the half and half, and then whatever else you want, like chocolate, and then you double that in liquid nitrogen. Okay, we actually need a, a bit of liquid nitrogen here. Chocolate guy. I'm always pleased by ice cream. <laughs> Any kind of ice cream is good ice cream. <laughs> Because it's just floating, so a, a little push will make it go around lots of times. Yeah. yeah, you could let it go, it'll Define do like five gravity. more laps. So. I guess that's what magnets do. <laughs> I want a car like that. I know, that would be so cool. Me too. Yeah. Give it a little push.